Hello, welcome to the A to Z YouTube channel. My name is Toby Allen. I'm the A in A to Z, and I deal with the songwriting, producing, and engineering when it comes to your music. One of the things, of course, that comes under the engineering umbrella is drums. So that will be either recording a live drum kit, miking up in a studio, or it means programming drums using a drum sample library. And I want to talk today about some of the drum sample libraries that I've used and what I like and what I don't like. So just like the video we did two weeks ago with the amp sims, we're going to be putting them in the tier and actually talking about what I like and what I don't like. We're going to be doing the same today with drum libraries. Now, a couple of things I want to address first off before we get started. Firstly, I'm only going to be talking about drum sample libraries that I have and have used. I don't want to be talking about things I haven't used because that's just going to be complete rubbish. I have no idea what I'm talking about if I'm talking about a library I've never used. I also want to mention that this is not a sponsored video. Some of the libraries I've been either given with a discount or have been given completely, uh, that has not influenced what I'm going to be talking about. They've not. No one's asked me to make this video. No one has asked me to say anything specifically. This is entirely my own opinion. And that opinion is based entirely on the kind of music that I create and work with. So some libraries are absolutely phenomenally good, but are just not good for metal. So they will not get a high rating if I was to talk about that kind of uh, drum library. So bear that in mind when you're hearing my considerations and opinions. Now a lot of these drum libraries we have actually featured on the channel already, either in a cover song or in an original song, and if that is the case you will see a link up in the corner linking you to the song where we use that library so you can hear it in a full mix context. If you're watching this video from the future, then a couple of things, firstly... Hello there future man, and greetings from the past. And... S who was that? Secondly, we are going to be using some of these libraries in the future for upcoming videos, either originals or covers, and I will be coming back and adding the links to those in the cards so you can see those. If you're looking through this video and you're thinking, why didn't he include XYZ, it's because I don't own it. Uh, if you work for a company that makes that library, then I would absolutely love to work with you about making a demo or a video or something of that nature hit me up and we'll see what we can do. Now, what are we gonna be considering? We're gonna be considering a few expansions for Easy Drummer and some standalone libraries. Uh, let me just list those for you. We have, for Easy Drummer, we have Modern Metal, Duality One, Metal Machine, DFH, Metal with an exclamation mark, and the stock Easy Drummer 3 library. We're also gonna be looking at ML Drums, Ugritone Die Switch, Room Sound Kurt Ballou Volume 2, Mixwave Gojira Mario Duplantier, Mixwave Luke Holland, RS Enso, Get Good Drums Invasion, Get Good Drums One Kit Wonder Metal, Bogren Digital Crim, Drumforge Bergstrand, Drumforge Matt Grainer, Drumforge Saviour, and Robin Lejean's Sparrowhawk. And what I've also included in this is a very short demo standalone drums, no processing, so you can hear exactly what they sound like. Uh, obviously with each library, a lot of them have many, many samples, many snares to choose from, many toms to choose from, etc, etc. What I've done is just select what I really like from that library, my favourite snares, kicks, etc, etc. Uh, and there's no post-processing happening on any of these samples. All the processing that's happening is within the plugin or the library itself. So I wanted to make this as fair comparison as possible. Now, let's get into the drum libraries themselves. So first off, we have the Easy Drummer Modern Metal expansion. Let's hear how that sounds. Now, this one is made with Will Putney, who is a very well-known, very good producer. He's worked with bands such as Fit For An Autopsy, uh, Knocked Loose, Every Time I Die, 
those are the ones I can think of right now. But he, I'm a big fan of his work and, and his processing and producing style. So I was very keen to try this one out and have a play and, and use this. And I have done. in We use this one in our Master of Puppets cover, which is kind of ironic to use a modern metal library for an 80s thrash song but it worked i thought it sounded really great for that the snares are all really really good there's um they don't sound too polished they don't sound too uh, trashy or ringy or anything like that the rooms are very nice as well overall this is a very very good library and it slaps the next library we have is duality one this is made with jacob herman uh, jacob has worked with bands such as amaranth avatar and Vola, and he does some great work. So again, I was really clean to try this one out. I really, there's another one I really love. The toms are exceptional and so are the cymbals too. Uh, and there's a really great room. There's, he did lots of microphones in that room. So there's lots of options as well for your room sounds. It is a very, very good library. It's kind of a bit more towards, uh, a little bit more towards kind of rock uh, and prog than metal per se. Whereas a Duality 2 pack is more geared towards metal so maybe eventually i'll try that one out but yeah again this is a very very good library we use this on our trivium pull harder on the strings of your master misheard lyrics video we did actually use a little bit of bogren digitals uh, and tci's on the toms as well so there's a little bit of a blend in there but you can definitely hear the character of this library through in that demo song so this is yet another one where it slaps our next library is Easy Drummer Metal Machine. This one is quite a bit older than some of the other Easy Drummer expansions that I've talked about. This one was made by one of my favorite producers of all time, Andy Sneap. He has worked with so many bands. <laughs> some really absolutely fantastically iconic albums such as uh, Kill Switch Engage, Alive or Just Breathing, and End of Heartache, Trivium's Ascendancy. He's worked with several Testament albums, several Amon Marth albums, Arch Enemy's Doomsday Machine, Nevermore, Dead Heart in a Dead World. And of course, more recently, he's worked with Judas Priest and Dream Theater as well. But this library is, a, is quite an older library. It's actually made for Easy Drummer 1, to give you an idea of the age. And funnily enough, this one was an, uh, I got this library as an anniversary present for my wife uh, a couple of years after we got married, which is an extra soft spot in my heart for this one as well because of that. Uh, it's a little bit more dated because of the age. I feel like the symbols don't sound as real as a lot more modern libraries, but the, t the shells themselves are still very, very good and exceptional and very, very usable. I would probably likely, if I was to use this one now, would actually combine this one with something like Duality One or Modern Metal to get the symbols from those libraries with the shells of this library. And we may, in fact, actually use this exact setup for an upcoming video, perhaps. All that, aside, all that said, I would rate this one as eight. For the age, it's very, very good. As I say, it's a little bit older, so it's getting a little bit more dated. Some of the more some of the more modern libraries are now sounding better than this one, but it's definitely ahead of its time and still very usable. Our next library is DFH. Now, speaking of old libraries, this is as old as it gets. This is one of the original TuneTrack 
libraries. Uh, I think I got I got a disc of this off of eBay for like a tenner or something awesome. So for that, you know, the great value for money. This one, it, it, again, is very dated. The symbols are not quite as um, real sounding as some of the more modern ones. The snares sound very early noughties. There's a very sort of new metal kind of sound to them, uh, and they're great for that. You might find with some more modern metal that you want something a bit more full, a bit bigger sounding on the snares, uh, a bit less pingy and high tuned, and uh, with a bit more sort of snare wires going on in them. But this is totally a usable library. How we haven't used this yet on the channel, but we may do in the future. So keep an eye out for that. This one, again, I'm going to give it an eye. It's for the for the age. Is pretty impressive, really. Uh, you could still use it. I think if the shells, I would probably still use the, uh, the shells. The kicks are kind of a little bit odd sounding, very artificial sounding, uh, but the, the toms are great and the snares, they have a very definite purpose. If you, if, if they are the right snares, then they're the right snares. But I feel like there's kind of a, a quite a, a bit of a narrow niche where you'd want to use those. The next is metal exclamation mark. Now, from what I understand, this is essentially built up upon one set of samples that are then processed and blended by different producers. Those different producers are Mark Lewis, Daniel Bergstrand, and Jason Sukoff. Now, the name Jason Sukoff um, was one that stood out to me when I first saw this kit because of his work with Trivium. Uh, so this is why I ended up having to have this one. It doesn't have a huge amount of, of samples per velocity layer, so it doesn't sound particularly natural to my ears and a lot of the processing is very extreme so it doesn't it doesn't really give you the option for like a raw uh, library that you could then export into your DAW and actually do all the processing yourself so that kind of counts against it in that regard the I'm, I'm not a huge fan of any of the snares I, I'd always find like I'm fighting against getting those snares to sound how I want them to sound overall I'm gonna have to give this one a floppy it's uh, like, you know, hitting, imagine drumming with floppy drumsticks, you know. <laughs> That's the analogy I'm going for here. Uh, it's, it's okay. If you were looking, if you had Easy Drummer and you're looking for an expansion, this is probably one of the ones I've got. It's probably the last one that I would recommend. I would definitely be looking at even Metal Machine, which is older, or even uh, Duality One or Modern Metal. I feel like those are going to be hitting the mark better for you than, than say, this one particular. And... The last one we're talking about with Easy Drummer is the stock sounds that come with Easy Drummer 3. These are very, very well recorded. They are phenomenally good sounding drums. There's essentially three libraries within the library. So there's three different rooms and different kits in there. And then you can change out the individual shells and uh, parts within each of those three kits as well. So there's a huge amount of options there. I just feel like they are not particularly geared towards metal as such. They're, they are really, really good and it's a very very good if you just had easy drama 3 you could you could do what you could get what you need needed done with this library with a bit of work now with this one we use in our end of heartache uh cover which is linked up here and uh we really enjoyed that one that was great to have javi uh pereira on our channel to be able to do the vocals on that one that was really cool really enjoyed that one um, and i think the we we got a good sounding set of drums using that library if I remember rightly, I think Ruman used some samples as well to, to get more in the ballpark of what we were looking for. But as I say, there's a great library. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I would say it's I, um, on the upper end of I. 
Uh, again, like if you're if you're wanting to do rock or any of the other sort of softer kind of genres with that one, you're absolutely set for getting what you need. For metal, you may find you want to get better sounds from one of the other expansions, which are geared towards metal and have more metal sounds. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is ML Drums. Now, I'm going to talk about ML Drums Essentials and ML Drums Free. Now, though, we did two videos on these. I did a video on ML Drums free and then another one on ml drums essential pack so it's the same engine the same program but you have more cymbals and more toms and more snares and kicks to choose from And I really like how this one sounds. The snare has got, it's got, again, kind of similar to the DFH, where it's got kind of like a real sort of high-tuned, pingy kind of sound to it, which, when you look at the videos where Miko talks about the library, he was saying that that kind of pingy, new metal kind of snare thing was what he was going for and what he feels like is missing in a lot of modern, modern metal. So that's really great to hear and really enjoy that one. The toms sound great, the kicks sound great, and the cymbals, it is very good. And value for money is fantastic because the free one is free and it sounds good and it's totally usable. The essentials is very cheap as well. And it gives you the expansion with the extra uh, items there in the shells and the cymbals. And I imagine there's gonna be more expansions coming in the future. So I'm really excited to hear what those will sound like. My only criticism, if there is such, if, if that's the right word, so there's loads of presets within the plugin that will use different uh, processing for different sounds, and I'm not a huge fan of a lot of what the processing is doing in a lot of the presets. So it would be nice to see an update to that and to the processing itself. But if you turn all of that off and do the processing yourself externally, then that's not obviously not going to be an issue. One thing that's very, very good on this one is super easy to root out your drums into your DAW, as I demonstrated in the Essentials video. We also use this one in the Bloody Pineapples Was Bin Ich song, so be sure to check that one out and give that a listen. You can hear that in the full context. Overall, bearing in mind the sound and the features, the value for money, this one is a drum bay. It's very, very good, and I highly recommend it. And um, if you're, if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend money on drums or you can't spend money on drums, no judgment, then ML Drums Free will absolutely get you a sound which you can use for demos. You could do on a release as well if you don't need too many toms or cymbals. And the Essentials is bargain basement, but very good. It's, it sounds better than it costs. You're getting very good value for money on that one. All right, Ugratone Die Switch. Let's give this a listen. I do not like this one. I don't like the sounds. They're very, very machine gunny, and the user interface is a mess. I don't like it. It's very hard to use. The mapping is, it's very confusing to set up. I think I paid $4 for this one, so value for money. I would recommend, if you only had four dollars to spend on a drum kit, I wouldn't get this one. I'd get ML drums that I just spoke about. I'm really sorry, but I don't have anything positive to say about this one, so I'm gonna give it a minging. Now, next one is Room Sound Kurt Ballou Volume 2. I did do a complete walkthrough of this one um, for Room Sound. We also did a competition to give a, co uh, a copy away, which was really cool. That's very good of Room Sound to let us do that. We also did a cover song of Mastodon using this library. And again, we had Javi come on the channel and perform vocals for us on that, which is absolutely awesome. He's a phenomenal vocalist. Listen to Obsidious if you haven't done so already.
Now, this is a really, really good library. This is exceptionally well produced, exceptionally well engineered. Uh, Kurt Ballou is really, really great. Um, if you if you listen to or are a fan of Russian Circles or Converge or High on Fire or any of the other bands that Kurt Ballou has worked with, you know exactly what you're in for with this drum library. And it is that level of detail that Kurt Ballou gives to all of his work. There's uh, a lot going on behind the scenes in the library as well. There's, a, you can, there's so many options for uh, bleed, for bleed between the different microphones. You've also got the option to run everything through tape because all of the samples were also run through tape. You can choose individual parts of it to be tape and individual parts of it to be digital. There's some built-in effects which work really well. The, the mapping screen is very easy to use. It's just a, it's a very, very, very well put together drum library, um, which I really, really enjoy. My only criticism, if there is such a thing, is that I feel like I would like a, a more pingy snare. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows I love a good pingy snare. Um, and I feel like the, the three snares there are very, very good, but they just... Uh, I feel like the, it would be nice to have one that's kind of a bit more leaning towards extreme metal. That being said, that's not really the kind of genre that Kurt Blue works with, so that's absolutely fair that there wouldn't be something like that included. Overall, I would say this is another drum bay uh, library. Really good, definitely recommend it. Mixwave Gojira. Mario Duplantier. I'm a really big Gojira fan. I think anyone who knows me knows that. I absolutely love Gojira. Big fan of Mario. So when this library came out, I just had to have it. You know, there's just there was there was no there was no hesitation. I had to have it. The, the processing on the drums is very, very good. It sounds really great. It is, if anything, maybe a little too over the top with some of the processing, but I think that's kind of, um, kind of his Taylor style to go quite over the top. Well, you know, that's, that's great, that's fine. You have got unprocessed sounds in there as well, so if you want to do the processing yourself, you've got that option. The hi-hat articulation is very nice. There's a, a lots of levels of open. So if you wanted to kind of have like some hits on the hi-hat and have it so it slowly opens up, you've got six different open articulations for the hi-hat as well as loads of closed, slightly closed, tight, all that sort of thing. The hi-hats are the highlight pun intended, of the library for me. I really like the rides as well. Those are really great. My only criticism of the library in general is that there are not a huge amount of samples per velocity layer. I believe there's 10 velocity layers for the shells and 10 hits within each of those velocity layers, which is not a huge number. So there is sometimes kind of a bit of machine gunning kind of sound and you have to really uh, massage the velocities a lot to be able to get it to sound natural. That's fine. If you're happy to put that work in and that time, extra time in to get those um, humanizations and velocities going then it's worth it because it does sound very good we've used this library in a number of covers it was used on my album on the Vrak album you can hear that on all of the songs and uh, obviously that was a franken kit made of mixwave gojira and invasion and some other samples as well so it's not necessarily a true representation of what the library sounds like on its own so we did a cover of gojira's toxic garbage island with that i think we may have also used it in the bullet for my valentine cover as well yeah. If so, there'll be a link in the corner um, directing you to those videos where so you can hear them in the mixed context. Overall, I would give Mixwave, Gojira, Mario Duplantier a It Slaps, because it does slap indeed. There's, like I said, there's a few things which kind of uh, stop it from becoming drum bay in my opinion, um, but it is very, very close. It's very, very good. It's it's good, it's good value for money as well, not a hugely expensive uh, kit, and it sounds great. Um, if you're happy to put the time in with the humanization. Now the next library we're going to talk about is the Luke Holland one, which is also from Mixwave. <laughs> Now, 
my first reaction to this one is it has it's very small kit there's not a huge amount of toms or symbols on this one just two toms which for me when i'm programming metal i like there to be at least four really the other thing is that there's not a huge amount of samples actually going in behind the scenes so it tends to get a little machine gunny for my for my liking now there are genres of music on the styles of aesthetic that you want to go for where it's very sort of one shotty very machine gunny and very explosive and huge this is the library for that there's a, a an additional snare off to the side called the popcorn snare that i actually really like the sound though it has that sort of like really tiny high-pitched kind of sound to it and if you watch the song that we did the fat king which you can see up here on that one there were some blast beats i was struggling to get sounding good on the normal snare so i actually programmed them on the popcorn snare and it did sound really cool to switch between the two of them so that is an option if you're wanting to have some lower velocity hits you can switch over to that one for a different kind of sound overall it's not one I will probably be using very much. Uh, it's it's I, it's it is a lot cheaper than the Gojira one if I remember correctly. So value for money still there. I, it's just it does It's not a hugely natural sounding kit. But then I don't think that's what it's set out to be. It's not set out to be a natural sounding kit. So you kind of just got to manage your expectations on that one. If that's and if you like the sound that Luke Holland has on the album uh, that he recorded when making this this library then you know you can't go wrong with it it's going to be great it's going to do the job for you now the next one is uh one i don't hear talked about very much at all it's enso by rs uh, rs is rudinger sastry so it's alex rudinger and an sastry working together to make this drum library Now there's quite a few options available to you as far as the different shells and the different symbols and things. I'm not a huge fan of the interface. It feels really clunky to use and it's kind of difficult to navigate. The pro there's a little bit of processing there but it's very difficult and fiddly to find. There's no mix window. There's a mix window for each individual element of the kit but not one for the overall kit so you can't see like the snares and the kicks and the cymbals and the toms at once and mix them you can only go into each shell and each symbol individually which is a little bit frustrating to try and use the, it doesn't feel as glued together as a lot of the other libraries as well so it sounds like a collection of each individually spot mic'd piece of the kit rather than sounding like a whole collective like a drum kit should so i find it is a little bit difficult and frustrating to get a good sound out of we haven't used it on the channel I and mean, we may give it a go with a song or a cover or something like that in the future we'll have to see what happens i need to have a bit more play with it i'm just at the moment most of my experience with it has been kind of frustrating which is a shame because alex rudinger and, and anip sastry are fantastic musicians so i was really excited to get to get my hands on this kit um, and i was a little bit disappointed when it came to actually using it so overall uh, i have to give this one a floppy it's it feels like it needs work um and hopefully there'll be a, a new rs library that comes out which fixes all those issues that would be really nice i'd love to see that and uh hopefully we'll get to have a play with it too now the next one is get good drums invasion let's give that a listen Now, Get Good Drums is what a library that gets gets a lot of uh, screen time on YouTube for sure, and on social media generally. It, it's, it seems to be the one that is very, very popular with bedroom musicians and the home studio guys. And you know, it's fair enough because the 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 value for money is definitely there. The quality for what you you pay is definitely there. It's, and there's and, and, and Nolly and Periphery are very, very popular as well. Um, 
in, within the, that kind of market. So they've done a really good job of marketing this one for that, that audience. There's a lot of great options on this one. There's plenty of toms. I think we've got six toms in total on this one. There's plenty of symbol choices as well. You've got loads of splashes and chinas and symbols and you've got i hats and you've got x hats and uh, you've got the snares are really good. I love all of the snares. There's not a single snare in there where I think, ah, uh, the Joey Jordison snare is probably my favorite. Um, I use that one. You can hear it for sure in the despoiler, which is going to be linked up here. We also used Invasion in our Funeral for a Friend cover. So that's uh, worth having to listen to as well if you want to hear something in the context of something a bit more different. I also like the kick and the snare have one shots that you can blend in and choose from, which are kind of almost uh, more sort of like electronic snares or electronic kicks that are very not the sort of things you would think of for metal but if you blend them in you can actually add in some like real girth to the kick while still having a kind of natural sounding kick from the the mic kick and same with the snare you can there's one called like pop rocket which adds a little bit of sort of like uh upper mids and highs to the snare which kind of just helps the, the real snare to cut through uh, in you know dense mix so there's lots of things in there that are really really cool overall i would say this one this one is a drum bay. My only criticism, which isn't really a criticism of get good drums at all, is that it's a little bit ubiquitous. So you're hearing it a lot in people's songs because it's a very, very popular library. Get good drums are exceptionally popular. So it's almost a victim of its own success because it's such a good seller and it's done so well and is so popular, you're starting to hear it everywhere. Again, not a criticism against uh, get good drums invasion it's just uh it's just it is what it is next one is get good drums uh, one kit one the metal I, I think this one as being like GGD Invasion light. It's almost like if you were to say GGD Invasion was superior drummer, then this is the easy drummer version. So everything is, is pre-processed. There's less options. So you can't like sw switch out the, the kicks for a different kick or switch out the snare for a different snare. You have what you have and that's it. Because of that, it's a very cheap kit. So it's very good value for money on this one. It sounds really great. The, the built-in processing is really great. We use this one in the soft gating site cover. And uh, yeah, it sounds great. It's, it's got a Vinnie Paul snare, which is also featured in GGD Invasion and is one of my favorite sounding snares. So that is a, a great option for demos. And you can, you could use it in a, in a release. Uh, we, we, so we did so in, in the video with the, uh, the Trivium cover. It's good value for money. I'm gonna say it slaps. Now we have Bogren Digital Crim. This one is possibly my favorite library right now. So we know straight away this is gonna go in the drum bay uh, rating. There's a lot of features in there which is really cool. The, the automatic anti-machine gun feature is very clever and very good and, and it sounds fantastic. The samples themselves are very, very good. Uh, I'm a big fan of Jens Bogren who produced uh, and engineered this one. He's worked with Arch Enemy and Monomath and Baby Metal and Septic Flesh and Darth how their latest album is going to be is going to, it has been mixed by Jens he's also worked with Between the Buried and Me and Leprous as and Opeth so tons of very well known bands um he has a really really great sound it's I just I just love it so there's quite a few um options on here so you can switch out the kicks there's interestingly a dead uh, heads kit uh, kicks which just gives you something a little bit different to play with a little bit unusual you've got a couple of snares to choose from they both have that sort of really massive uh, ringy kind of real 
natural sounds to them there's also a few one shots included you can load up your own one shots into there as well which is very useful you've got a lot of multi-out options you've got a lot of inbuilt processing options it's it just it's very very good i absolutely love it so overall as i said this one is a drum bay i absolutely recommend it it's very very good absolutely love it we've so far we've only done the one video with it but we're working on several other videos in the at the moment which we'll be using it we've got a video coming out in a couple of weeks which is a tr another trivium cover which is using this library that is absolutely doing the job and once that's been come out i'll put a link up here for it also working on some other original songs um, which we'll be using this library it's quite likely that the next Farak album will be using this library as well drumforge bergstrand let's give this one a listen <laughs> Now this one is it's unusual. It's there's a ton of options. There are so many kicks and so many snares and so many toms to choose from, which is awesome. So you've got a whole bunch of different sounds. It is very kind of raw and kind of the grimy, dirty kind of metal kind of sound to it, which is really cool. I don't tend to make a huge amount of that kind of music. If you've seen any of our other videos, we tend to go a kind of slightly more polished kind of sound overall. But these are these are great for that kind of real sort of, you know, you want to do some black metal or uh, death metal or those kind of gr raw, grungy, grimy kind of genres. This is an absolutely perfect library for you. I think this one I'm going to give an eight because it's almost a kind of option paralysis thing for me. I'm like going through the kicks and I'm like, okay, there's like, you know, a ton of kicks here to choose from, but I struggle to find one that I want to settle on. And a lot of the processing that goes on when you load up the presets, there's, there's processing things going on in the background and it's kind of just a bit different to what I would be going for in terms of the processing. So it takes a bit more work to kind of manipulate and massage into getting to the kind of sound that I want. We haven't done a, a cover or anything with this one yet, but I feel like this is one that we will be using um, and maybe my opinion of it will grow once I've actually had more of a play with it and actually used it in a full mix uh, context. So that remains to be seen. For the moment, I'm going to give it a night. Next, we have the Drumforge, Matt Grainer. We've dropped a walkthrough video of this last week. So if you haven't watched that one and want to know more about this one, hit the link. We are working on a cover that which uses this one. So if you're watching this at the time I made this video, it's not out yet. If you're watching this in the future, the link will be up there and you can give it a watch. This is hands down the best John Forge library uh, that they've made so far. It has that, that nice balance between uh, having the sort of raw and and dirtiness to it, but it's polished. Um, the snares, all of them sound good. So if anything, the problem here is uh, option paralysis on which one you want to use because you love all of them. It's the most glued together sounding kit of the John Forge ones. It's the one that sounds most to me like an actual kit when, when you hear it. It's almost like it's greater than the sum of its parts. Like the snare sounds good, the kick sounds good, the overhead sounds good, but together, oh, they sound even better when they're all together. So that's something I think they've really, really nailed in this one. There are a lot of samples in the background on this one. This is the biggest of, I think, I believe, out of all of the libraries I've talked about today, this is the biggest one. It's a 20 gig library. It's small on the scale of Superior Drummer, but on the scale of Contact Libraries and Drum Forward Libraries, that's a big boy. So this one, I'm gonna give a drum bay. It is fantastic, and I definitely recommend it. Drum Forward Savior.
Now this one is a little bit different because it's made in conjunction with the drum company Savia. So it's all of their shells. There's quite a few unusual pieces in there. So there are shells that are made of an unusual material which you wouldn't normally think of or normally see in a drum library. So that's very cool. It's very, very versatile. There are plenty of sounds there for um, softer stuff, uh, rock and indie and things. But then there's also sounds which will be work well for metal. There's loads of options you've got all the processing and everything that you have in, in the drum forge libraries so this one is there's there's a lot there's a lot going for it and uh it's pretty great uh, uh, while i feel like this one gives you a lot of bang for your buck there's a lot of uh, options there and if you want kind of a, a one size fits all this this does the job i kind of struggle to put into words what it is um i struggle with this one i I think that you know it's a great one size fits all so it's great value for money if you're working with a lot of different genres and you want to have lots of different sounds available to you it's great for that and it, i believe it was the first drum forge library to incorporate left and right separate uh, samples so you can have if you programming and you want to have it sound really realistic you can program which snare hits are left hand hits and which ones are right hand hits same with the kicks as well and the toms as well so that was a really good feature i just struggle to find a sound that i want out of it when i'm working with it and i just tend to reach for other libraries such as um, Easy Drama or Crim or GGD Invasion to get those sounds that I want personally. So I have to give this one an I and I think the, there's plenty of people who will absolutely love this one and will, will find that it works perfectly for them. It's just just doesn't really hit the spot for me. All right, and then lastly, we have something a little bit different. This is a, li a library from my good friend, Robin. And this one, um, he has a number of different libraries. There's one here that we're going to be actually talking about two different ones that I've combined together. We've got Sparrowhawk, which we're using for the shells, and we've got Phoenix, which we're using for the overheads and the cymbals. So let's have a listen to that one. Now that sounds pretty great. And I know that Robin has spent a lot of time on getting the sample selection engine working so that it sounds real. And I think those are some of the, the realest sounding symbols I've heard in a library. And that on its own, it gets a very, very high score. I think the biggest downside of this library is its interface. It's just, a, it feels a little dated and a little clunky to use. It's certainly better than the RS interface. Um, and it, it's not it's not bad, it's not a bad interface. It's just, it takes a little getting used to. The way it's laid out is a little bit different and, and the mapping is a little bit different, but it's all there and you can get the sounds that you want out of it, which is great. So yeah, I'm gonna give this one a, it slaps because it does indeed slap. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, you are awesome. Please give us a thumbs up if you think we're awesome too and uh, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell and all of the normal YouTube algorithm inducing shenanigans because we've got videos coming out every Sunday and I'd love to hear what you think of these drum libraries I've talked about if there's any drum libraries you think I should check out um, as I said at the start I haven't included anything I don't own so if you're thinking, where's Modern and Massive? Why hasn't it got Modern and Massive? Oh, how dare you leave out Superior Drummer? I don't own those, so I can't comment on them. But uh, if someone's feeling generous and wants to give them to me, oh yeah, I'll definitely <laughs> give them a rating and a, and a review then. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.